Hi everyone, welcome back to um, the 80slashers.com YouTube channel. Uh, today's episode, um, we're going to uh, do something a little different, I thought. And I thought we'd take a look through um, an old Fangoria magazine um, from the early 80s. Um, yeah, so this, this, is, this issue here... Um, is issue number uh, 31. Let's see it right up there. Issue number uh, 31. And this is from December of 1983. Um, so yeah, I thought it'd be fun to take a look through this. Um, there's, you know, all kinds of horror in this magazine. Um, so we'll go through it. It'll be fun to look at just, you know, stuff outside of the... Uh, outside of the 80s slashers uh, subgenre. But um, we're definitely going to go through this and try to look through and find anything that is related to 80s slasher. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll pinpoint those, we'll take a look at those, and um, see what we have. <clears throat> um, before we start, if anyone is not familiar with Fangoria, um, basically what this was, this, this, this was a magazine, it's, it's actually still going today it was it, it stopped uh, printing for a while but it is it is back today um but this was a magazine um through the um the 80s and 90s this was like the main magazine that um horror fans um would would read um back then 80s 90s there was there was no internet um so there was no and there was no DVDs for the majority of it. Um, so no DVDs means no special features. Um, so if you wanted to get more information, like, um, you know, um, interviews with cast and crew members, behind-the-scenes photos, um, talk of coming sequels and coming attraction movies, um, you know, um, some of, like, the, the special effects work... Um, all that stuff. Um, this was basically the only the only place you were gonna get that back back in the eighties and uh, early to mid nineties. Um, uh, yeah, you know, cause you know you bought a you bought or rented a VHS tape and and that was it. You you, you got the movie, you know, and you, you could get the movie and you could like rent it and you could pause it and rewind, fast forward to your favorite spots, and all that good stuff. But um. But that was it, you know. There was there, there wasn't much else to do. So something like this, when they came out, um, it was exciting because you got to you got to look a little behind the scenes how some of your favorite kills and some of the favorite gore and all that kind of stuff was was made and talk and read right from the right from the the creators' mouths and interviews with them. Um, so it was pretty cool, and you got some cool cool images, cool posters. You know, you can cut them out and hang up on your wall if that was your thing. Um, so yeah, Fangoria, really, really important magazine in the, within the horror community for sure. Um, and like I said, now this one here, like I said, this is from uh, December of 83. So in terms of, um, 80 slashers, um, this is right in the heyday. This is, you know, I, I've always considered 1980 to 84, the golden age of, um, of 80 slashers. So this is, you know, this is near the tail end of, of that golden age, but it, it's still in there. Um, so there was a lot of good, um, good stuff coming out around that time. So yeah, so I thought we'd just, we'll just take a quick look. We're not going you know, to read this or anything like that. We'll just go through, take a look, see what kind of, you know, features, some pictures, and anything we can to point out um, some 80s uh, slasher stuff. We'll take a look and see how much is in here. So right off the bat in the cover here, we have, you know, it's going to talk about The Exorcist, um, you know, Dead Zone. Um, so those are two really good movies that I that I liked. Amityville 3D, um, that's the cover story here. I've never seen this. I've heard bad things about Amityville 3D, um, but I am a sucker for the 3D movies, the, the you know, the 80s 3D movies. Um, so if I ever get a chance to see it in 3D, I, I definitely will. Um, yeah. Now, right off the bat, here we go. Campus Slaughter Pieces. So, we're going to get a little story on pieces, which is fantastic. Um, you know, again, like, this is... 
like that is a movie I, I had never seen this movie growing up in the um in the video stores or anything like that I you know I this movie didn't come to my attention until well until I was an adult um looking back on these films um so yeah if, if I would have gotten this magazine in 1983 you could read about it and you'd be like oh wow that sounds fantastic and it, it is fantastic so it's yeah this magazine is is, is fantastic for that great stuff um, what do you guys here? We got some Twilight Zone. Um, that's, I think that's, that's the really infamous, um, well, I guess that's the terror at something thousand feet, you know, John Lithgow, I think. Uh, Jaws 3D, another 3D. It's funny, I think 19, what, 1982 and 1983, it was like the height of these, of, of the, the 3D revival in the 80s. You had the Amityville, you had Jaws 3D, you had, of, of course, Friday the 13th Part 3. Um, there was a Parasite. Um, I, I believe that was 1982, starring a young Demi Moore. Um, yeah, this was the time where this the, the 3D was like the big thing, and there were there were, people were going to the theaters to see these movies in 3D. So it's it's that that's what this magazine is is from a time of. So it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, blood, gore, whole lots more, um, yeah, I don't know what that is, that looks like, almost looks like Freddy Krueger's, uh, finger claws there, but, uh, this is 83, and so the first film didn't come out until 84, so, yeah, I don't know, I'm not sure, we'll take a look, so, and, oh, here we go, this is, the uh, the polar poster is of The Fun House, another 80s slasher, so right on the cover we have pieces, and the fun house and the keep so whatever or i'm not sure what that is preview the keep not familiar all right so let's take a peek here so i think the poster there we go it's just yeah there's the fun house that's the the lovely looking um monster i guess like it's the it's, i think that's the if you haven't seen it it's like the the sun, like the, you know, the, the circus leader, the, the, the lead carney, you know, he's hiding his son because he looks like this and he's crazy and he likes to kill people. So that's him. Yeah, the fun hair, so that's cool. And I think there's like a, on the, on the back here. Yeah, we'll get to that. Um, so yeah, so what do we have? This is just a, um, yeah, you can order a poster. That's a super cool poster. Um, unsigned, $6.00. Signed by the artist, ten dollars. Um, that's really cool. That would look good somewhere. Uh, I like. I love. This is from Starlog. Um, I guess that's like a this and Starlog and uh, Fangoria and was the famous monsters. I think they're all like the same publishing umbrella. Um, but yeah, man. Like this stuff is like they don't. I don't know. I used to love this. Like you get a magazine and something you cool and you just. You, you drop some money in your return address in this little cutout thing in an envelope, you know, eight to ten weeks later, you, you, you got a poster, hopefully, you know, you, you know, it's kind of out of your hands, you, you send it and you, you pray that you, you don't get ripped off, but, uh, yeah, that's really cool. Um, so yeah, we just have, you know, table of contents, all the stuff that we're gonna, that we're gonna see, there's pieces down there again, another little, a fine lady with an axe in her skull, fantastic. Uh, the Living Kuna? Don't know what that is. Uh, yeah, Amityville 3D. Yeah, see, I've never seen this movie, but I've, I was always assumed Amityville was Haunted House and Ghosts. Uh, and Possession. Uh, this does not look like that, so I, I, I don't know. I have no idea what that film's about. Um, yeah, so... You go dead zone an image from the dead zone yeah Cronenberg Stephen King yeah. so then just a rundown of all the stuff that that you can see here so there's a lot of stuff Amityville again we already see Exorcist uh, pit in the pen uh, yeah I don't know what that is uh, the dead zone uh, pieces yeah so just a bunch of like articles and stuff um, so we'll take a look here So yeah, so these look like they're just the um, the letters um, written to the editors, you know, asking questions and whatnot. Um, I never, you know, 
if these are actually written by real people or not. I, I, I don't know. You, you always you always have to wonder. Um, nowadays, I'm sure they probably are, but, uh, you know, internet, you can check and stuff. But back then, like, you know, who knows? Who, who knows if um, Nathan Grodick from Long Island, you know? Who knows? You don't know. Um, but yeah, it's always cool. They ask some questions about past, previous issues, and so they always answer them there, so that's kind of neat. Um, there's George Romero, a little photo of him, so they must have had an article. Yeah, this article here is talking about, you know, his Living Dead series, so um, it's pretty cool. Who removes a video of zombies? Um, let's see this. You know, these are cool. I always like these. These are like ads where you can you can buy VHS like a catalog um, so you can send three dollars just for the catalog and then you can order you can order uh, you can order films you got horror sci-fi fantasy on pre-recorded video cassettes hundreds to choose from and uh, we got the howling um, Dead and buried, yeah. There's not, it's not selling it too much for me. Um, you, know, you got the Mastercard and the Visa. Um, yeah, I like, I like these. Um, this is, this is pretty cool. So you could like, yeah, you could order these movies. So if you see something like said pieces, like you don't know, you haven't heard of pieces before, you get this catalog and maybe, maybe you'll be able to track down a copy. Um, so that's cool. I like that. Here's more of the same, continuing with the uh, the questions here. Um, now here's, yeah, here's, you can um, sign up for the subscription to Fangoria. Um, so eight issues, which was, I think that at this time they put out eight issues per year. So eight issues, $23. That's, uh, yeah, that's all right, I guess. Um, yeah, you get a free classified ad. That's cool. I like that. Um, here's, is this like a letter or something? Cut out like, yeah, like a psycho and a, and a serial killer in a movie would do. Here we go. Maniac, here we go. So another 80s slasher reference here. Uh, a movie not seen in Canada. Hmm, interesting. See, it's stuff like this, like when I go back and read this stuff now, um, I, you know, I didn't know that this wasn't seen in Canada um, at the time. It's too violent, obviously, so... That's really cool. Alright, so now we're getting into the Amityville uh, 3D cover story. Um, and yeah, like I said, they're talking about like the effects. Um, you know, things like this. Um, you know, we don't, you, you didn't get to see that back then. You get to, um, you know, nowadays you have the internet and, um, everything like that to, to track this down, but this is where you get to kind of read about it. You, you know, you go and see this movie in the theater and you're like, how did they do that? Because back then it was kind of a new technology for a lot of people, so you get to see it. It's kind of cool and you get some color pictures, which is nice. Um... Yeah, some more color pictures, some good gore. This magazine was great because they they always showed like horrific gore. Like, it, you know, you you didn't get to see this anywhere else at the time, so it's really cool. Um, so that's pretty cool. Now we're moving on to another story. This is about a Hammer film, apparently, Kiss of the Vampire. Um, yeah, Hammer Hammer film production. Um, so that's pretty cool. Like, again, I, I would imagine, um, most kids in the States in the early 80s probably didn't know too much about the Hammer films, I wouldn't think. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I, I never did. I, and not until later in life did I hear of, you know, of Hammer films. So, um, yeah, this is very opening your, your awareness of, of other horror films, um, throughout the world. Um, so that's, it's really cool. Stories like that. Um, again, yeah, advertising more. So, you know, you see these things and it's um, 
whole bunch of different horror films you read about them it, it's that's fantastic um yeah this is cool again this is now this is another one of these um is this like for vhs tapes i think it's yeah i think this is for, for you can order order vhs tapes again I, you know you check off what you want you fill the total you put your money in a return address and uh, send it off and pray they don't rip you off but Fantico's Horror Heaven, Splatter Movies, um, Herschel Gordon Lewis Films, uh, what else do we have here? Yeah, here's the Famous Monsters, yeah, so this is like Famous Monsters was another magazine um, that was within the umbrella of Fangoria, so they have their own makeup book. Are these books? Maybe these are books. Let's see. Yeah, maybe these are books, I don't know. Oh yeah, famous monsters. These are magazines, Fangoria. Okay, so you can yeah, okay, so you can back order, you can back order the, back order issues. No, anyways, that's cool. I, I would love this. You go through, you, if you don't have the picture, you just you know maybe maybe a title will catch your, catch your fancy, and you can order it. You know, yeah, So these are always cool. I always like like to look at these a little closer. Um, this is still, I think, the Hammer story, Hammer film story. Now we're moving into the Twilight Zone in Jaws 3D, uh, another 3D film. And this is a, uh, it's an interview with Richard Matheson. Uh, yeah, so I guess he wrote, he was an author that, he, that wrote these films, I guess, or at least helped contribute with the screenplays, maybe. Um... So that's cool. Like that's that's great information, you know. Um, you know, I, I I get these magazines. I haven't looked through this magazine yet, but I I buy these magazines because I, I I like to read this because you know this is how I gain some knowledge of of, of, of horror films. You know, it's 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 still viable today because I still watch these movies as if they were current releases. You know, like I get like I said, I haven't I haven't seen Amityville three D. So whenever I get around to watching it, I have this I can go back and read about the making of and the three D effects. It's you know it's it's still a very relevant magazine today um, for someone such as myself. Um, yeah, now you got some three D posters. Three D is really big in eighty three. Um, Jack Kirby three D posters. Uh, Jack Kirby 3D, and of course we have Friday the 13th. How much is that? Because I would... Friday the 13th, 24 by 36. So it's a full-size poster. It's in red and blue. So I think it was like... It sounds like it was like... The print is like the red and blue, and you put on your glasses, and it, it looks like it's coming at you. That's fantastic. Only $3.50 plus postage. I would love to have that right now. Man... I, I'm gonna have to look these up on eBay. I, I don't. Four fifty, dollar postage. This is in the states, so I'm in Canada, so they probably would have charged me an extra five or six dollars. Um, but oh man, what a! Oh, I would love to have that. that. Would look so cool. And I have the glasses that came with part three and the D, the DVD that came like the the red and the blue glasses. Oh man, I would love to have that on my wall. I'm still part of the same interview. What's this? A good life. Yeah, just another movie by this Matheson guy that he wrote. Um, yeah, same thing. So now we're going over to The Keep, a movie I've never heard of before. It's a World War, World War II chiller. Hmm. Alright, so just talking about that. Again, like it's full color picture. That's nice. Um, Left for Dead by SS Troops. Yeah, so this is like a Nazi... Nazi horror film, which is, you know, they're kind of popular now with the zombie, zombie genre, so that's, it's interesting that there was 83, they were doing that. Um, yeah, that's Muriel Hemingway. Uh, God, I thought that guy was, uh, Carradine. Looks like, looks like, uh, David Carradine, but I guess not. It's whoever this guy is, Glenn. Yeah. Hmm. All right, now I got here. So more on that story. Now we're getting to now. Look at this. This is fantastic. The Blood Boutique. So you can order. So all the all the all the the people at home who are back in the eighties who were fans of these movies, you can order um, special effects like blood, um, like you got like you got wax kits, um, nose putty, 
blackout wax, um, blood for formal wear, blood capsules, uh, makeup pencils, spirit gum, liquid latex, um, different types of hair, crepe hair, uh, Man, like that's that's fantastic, you know. If you're making your own movies with like your Super 8 camera or whatever, whatever you had back in the early '80s, um, you could order some blood capsules. You know, ten caps for three fifty. I remember as kids, we we used to go to the we used to buy these, and um, me and my brother would would buy these, and you, you put them in your mouth, and as soon as you bit on them, and, you know, it would explode in your mouth, and you would spit it out, and look like you know. So we would like go to like go to like the like the Kmart parking lot like if if our if our mother was in there shopping and we we'd stay in the parking lot and we'd wait for a car to drive by and he would like pretend to like hit me in the face and I would I would shoot out the I would spit out the blood and uh, we got some we got some silly looks um so yeah that's fantastic I love I love this I love yeah that's ah oh, that's great man now like you can buy this stuff but I don't know you have to go to like I don't know, what are those novelty stores and stuff like that, and yeah, it's pretty cool. Alright, now we're looking at the, uh, the exorcist effect, same thing, you know, like the people love, like that's like, well, here, spitting out the pea soup, um, green puke, I think, I think they, I think it's, I think she used the, the pea soup is what they said. Um, so yeah, you know, you can read all about this and find out how they, how they made that, that's pretty cool, oh, it's an interview with them, is it, is it with the, yeah, with the mechanical effects guy, so that's cool, so the, the last one, we got an interview with an author, now this one we have like a special effects interview, so yeah, so much, so much good info for this, it's fantastic, um, just more things, oh, she's floating with the head spinning, oh, look at that, that's, that's creepy as hell, man, yeah, good effects in that film, uh, over here, again, just a little best of Fangoria, so it's more like a, uh, you know, like a thick magazine or a book, I guess. Three twenty-five, dollar five postage. That's crazy. Yeah, I, I would like, I wish you could still order these. Um, Alright, so let's see what's next. Okay, so this is cool. So this is the, the Incredible Fango Index. So what this is... It's um, it's a it's a list of the back issues of all the magazines, and I don't know if this is like the cover story or like the main. The main um, like what's in there? I think it's just like telling you. I'm not seeing here. So it starts in seventy nine up until September of eighty three. Um, so how is that second half of the index will appear in our next issue? Yeah, so it's basically just telling you where you can find these. So, look at this, like John Carpenter. Um, you can find them in in these issues, I guess. I'm not sure what these numbers, how they're... Um... Hmm. Alone in the Dark, there we go. There's another 80s slasher, little picture. Uh, Martin Landau from Alone in the Dark. That's pretty cool, so it has it here. Um, so I guess these are the different... Um, the issue, so there's one, two, three, so there's four different issues in this, between 79 and 83, that, that featured some sort of article on Alone in the Dark, so if you wanted to grab one, you could, you could go buy these, um, and that must be, like, the number, like, the issue number, issue 21, 24, 25, 27, I'm not sure what the second half number, I'm sure if I read this, it, it's, it's there, four, four. oh, here we go, issue number, yeah, so issue number, and then page number, okay, so issue number twenty one or issue number twenty four, page twenty two, is where you can find an article on Alone in the Dark. So yeah, that's really cool. Um, you know Roger Corman. Um, there's probably all kinds of obviously eighty slasher stuff mixed in here. I'm sure if we keep going, oh, we get Friday. Here we go. Look at this. Friday the thirteenth, Friday the thirteenth part two, and Friday the thirteenth part three. So lots of um, lots of stuff. And I think this the C there must stand for cover. I'm not sure what the other, yeah. So this is cool. Jamie Lee Curtis, of course. We we can we can throw her in the '80s slasher category due to um, Halloween Two, Terror Train, Prom Night. Um. Yeah, don't. Uh, I said don't go in the woods, but they didn't put "Don't go in the woods." Even in Fangoria in '83, it gets no love. Yeah. 
yeah, but there's lots and lots of stuff here. This is uh, so cool. What a, what a, this is good for me now, actually, because if I'm, you know, if, when I'm going by and buying these back issues, like, I'm definitely going to look for some of these articles. Like, um, the first appearance of Friday the 13th is in issue number 6. And then it gets... Yeah, like, that's that's the issue right there, number 6. That's, that's the one I want. Uh, issue 4. No, well, actually, it says it in issue 4 right there, so that must be the first issue. I don't know. Pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. Um, again, more movie posters you can buy. Um, these are... S oh, wait. Actually, movie posters in full color. $8. Oh, that's a book. It's a book of movie posters. Okay, that's cool. That's really cool. Hmm. Alright. The Pit and the Pen. How to Make a Monster. Hmm. So this looks like these really old movies. Um, you know, like the... Almost look like the... What, the Ray Harryhausen type monster movies. Um, oh, man. Now look at this. This is... Oh, this is so good. Uh, horror film soundtracks on vinyl. Um, man, how much were these? What's the price on these? That's, that's fantastic. Eight ninety eight. God damn. Eight ninety eight plus postage. Canadian for me, it would have been nine eleven eleven dollars even. Eight ninety eight two or two eleven dollars shipped. I could get Halloween soundtrack by John Carpenter. Fantastic. Uh, video drone. What else we got here? Um, the burning. There we go. Where is, it? Where is that at? Which one is? It? Oh, there it is, right there. So there we go. Another itty slasher reference. Uh, Frankenstein. What else do we got here? Night of the Living Dead. Dawn of the Dead. Martin. Creep Show. Mad Max. Oh, uh, what's that one? Road Warrior. Escape from New York and Halloween too. All right. So we have the burning. Halloween 2, two more 80 slasher references. Um, oh, you got more down here. Taurus Trap, that's a slasher. Late 70s slasher, The Howling. Uh, Bird with the Crystal Plumage, that's Stereo Argento. Uh, Giallo film. Uh, Maniac, there we go. Phantasm. Inseminoid, I just watched this. That's hilarious. I just watched Inseminoid like last week. It's like a Roger Corman type type movie um it was fun it was bad but it was fun yeah and there's even more down here this is fantastic man eleven dollars for these records like how how you, you, you can't get this now i don't think like like on like oh it's fantastic man i had to look for these i had to look for the burning and i had to look for they're probably like 60 to 100 dollars now something ridiculous the video I have Dr. Cyclops. Um, so this looks like it's just a brief little rundown of, of movies. Um, talking about, I don't know if these are ones that had recently come out. Um, they probably are. You got Frightmare, Creeping Terror, Boogeyman. Uh, nothing, nothing 80s slasher related so much. Uh, Vestron video, that's, I love that. Hills Have Eyes. Um, yes, yeah, so these are older movies. It's like, it's like a 70, 78 or something. Um, so that's pretty cool. Here's that Livin' Kuna. Uh, oh, that, that's a that's a director. Okay, a 50s movie. She Demon, Shang, Frankenstein's Daughter. So another interview. Okay, cool. Um, from, yeah, these are like the all, like, like, you know, the old 50s monster type movies. So that's pretty cool. Continues on. Um, more his, like, his filmography looks like. Here is a another ad for there's so much you can buy in this posters and records and books and magazines and special effects props. Um, this is what's this? This is a it's just like a book il illustrations. Um, yeah, so nine bucks. Oh, on sale for seven dollars. That's cool. Hmm. Uh, so continue on. Now we get on to the dead zone. Um, again, on the set. Um, yeah, I talk with Deborah Hill, who was, um, is that, is that his wife, John Car He's, well, that's, I think that might be John Carpenter's wife. It, it, it definitely is a collaborating partner for Halloween. 
Deborah Hill. I'm not sure if I think they're married. I think they were married. I don't know. I'll have to double check on that. But yeah, that, that's cool. And there's some Cronenberg stuff. Um, Stephen King had said earlier. Stephen King, Deborah Hill, and David Cronenberg. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, so we get a few color shots. So the big the big stories like Amity, Amityville 3D, and Dead Zone. We're getting some uh, some some nice color photos, some nice gore and special effects, which is really cool. Um, a little bit on Cronenberg himself, so that's always that's always nice. Oh. Just lots more uh, color photos here. So backyard Halloween horrors. Cottage Industry House of Horrors. This is just like a, like a little independent something. So if you're up in the Connecticut area, back in the 80s, you could go to a little House of Horrors. So I'm sure this was fantastic for people in the area who didn't know about it. They can go and, and take a look and get a good scare on Halloween or something. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So again, we just get another... Um, take the Fango Challenge. So Oh, okay. National Enquirer. Uh, so it, I guess they're comparing themselves, Fangoria, um, <laughs> against People, the National of Stir, and National Enquirer. So do you get celebrity wife beating? Not in Fangoria. Revolutionary new diets? Not in Fangoria. Promiscuous British royalty? Nope. Not in Fangoria. Bad taste in general. You be the judge. That's awesome. So yeah, they obviously putting themselves up against like other popular magazines, basically saying these are garbage. You get Fangoria, fantastic. Um, and there's kind of a breakdown. You know, this is Tom Savini on Dawn of the Dead. It's talking about different issues, I think. Um, yeah, number six. We said back number six was the one to get, and it says right there, Friday the Thirteenth. So that is the issue to get, which is probably fifty dollars or more now. I will look it up. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, the host has stalked Oklahoma. Um, yeah, this is just more, looks like just more stories on old, old horror, you know, maybe back in the theater day, shock theater. That's cool. You know, it, get, it gets you a real good sense of the history of horror, you know? It's really good. Uh, Nightmare Library, so this is all about books, horror books. That's pretty cool. So it's stuff like this now, you know, something catches my eye. Look at this. I'm trying to track it down on eBay. The Connoisseur's Guide to the Contemporary Horror, which of course is now 80s horror. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I'd like to get that. The Kill. Hmm. Alright, so here we go. This is the main event for for me, and this is uh, the, the, little, the little article on pieces. Um, pieces from Spain with gore and gaffa, gaffas. Um, yeah. So that's that's near that's near the beginning of the film, the little boy cutting up, uh, chopping up his his mommy dearest. Look at this! Like how many how many magazines back in the day did you get a severed head, complete with eyes open, blood? Like that's fantastic. And you like get get the chainsaw about to take it off. Um, this is yeah, this is this is fantastic. Again, if you haven't seen pieces. Go check it out. It's it, it's in, it's in my top ten of all eighty slashers. Just for like the gore, it's it's over the top. It it's it's a wacky. It's a wacky eighty slasher, um, but it's super fun. See, so, yeah, we get more. Look at this. What a shot. What a sh look at that. That's fantastic. Um, axe right through the top of the skull. Another good scene. I think there's a girl in the shower running around in like the locker room. Yeah, man, I don't know how you could watch this and just not want to see this film. Yeah, that's good stuff. Um, you know, story on Basket Case. It's pretty cool. Some good core, there's the Basket Case there. Yeah, it's cool. It's a good shot. Yeah, Monster Invasion. See now, this looks like it might be about what's what's coming, like some future future releases, perhaps. That's what it kind of sounds like. Night Beast and Bloodshed, two films. I'm not the Night Beast. That title kind of rings a bell, but I'm not too familiar with these. Um, so that's pretty cool. They 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 both look okay. 
Um, are these more, uh, they always have eyes too. New, new Stephen King movie, Creep Show. There you go. Brand new Stephen King movie, Creep Show, coming out. It's pretty cool. Alright. So, yeah, these are just like the follow up to like the Matheson interview, the Kunha interview, Godfather of Gore by Herschel Gordon Lewis. It's pretty cool. Now, this is awesome. <clears throat> now, this, this is the, uh, the Tom Savini. So again, here we go, another another 80s slasher connection. Tom Savini's book on the art and technique of special makeup effects, Grand Illusions. Um, th that's fantastic. You can order this right from here. How much? How much is this? Twelve ninety five plus two fifty. Steal, steal of a deal right now. I'd love to buy. I'd love to have that a copy of this book. Um, again, something I'm gonna have to look up and see how much it's going for because that would be fantastic to have a book by Tom Savini on the subject that made him made him a legend. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. What we got on the cover? It's kind of hard to see. It doesn't look like there's any eighty slasher stuff there. It's probably all it looks like Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, good stuff. Real good stuff. Classified ads, very cool. Um, so you can buy some catalogs, you get some merchandise, Doctor Who merchandise, uh, some masks, oozing flesh, and you get some some horror memorabilia. <clears throat> you can buy scripts, that's cool. Some T-shirts, uh, just some random arcane messages from free subscriber ads. You can just send a oh this guy. Kiss, greatest band in the world, L and M. Must be true. That's cool. You can just again, are these real? I I don't know. These seem like they're more real. Just some random guy talking about Kiss in Fangoria. You know, I guess it fits. Um, yeah, they get the deadlines when to submit all this stuff. That's pretty cool. Um, just some more correspondence stuff. That's pretty cool. And the last page, um, mostly, okay, so here we got things to come. So next issue, you can take a poll of what you want in the next issue, behind the scenes of John Carpenter's Christine, or interview with Wyatt Ordung, writer of Robot Monster. Um, oh, there's more here. We got here, in-depth report on horror exploitation, horror wrestling, yes please. On set, the Night Killer, uh, man, Uncle Beth, eh, yes, that index is pretty cool. Chud, talk with Stephen King. Um, I'm going to, I would check off John Carpenter's Christine and Horror Wrestling, because that sounds awesome. Um, so yeah, and then you get some, some, some Starlog stuff. Um, subscribe, coming soon in Starlog. And this is the bottom half to the, um, the Funhouse, um, yeah, so you could open this up like this. You get like the full length. I, I just couldn't imagine. Like that's your whole cover, man. Your whole cover is gone to tear off just to hang up that ugly guy's poster. No, I wouldn't do that. I'm glad whoever owned this first never did that. And then on the back cover we just have some uh what's this like masks you can order? Yeah, all masks and handcrafted. So this is like something you see at like um, Friday the Thirteenth, um, the final chapter when little little uh, Corey Feldman has his bedroom. He's making all these masks that were actually Tom Savini's masks that he actually made. That's what these look. That's what these remind me of. Little. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. So that's that. That's it, guys. That is Fangoria issue number thirty-one from December of eighty-three. Um, that's, that's pretty cool to go through. That's pretty neat. Um, you know, not, not a ton of 80s slasher stuff, but we found some stuff in there. It's pretty cool. You know, there's a, a good range of horror. Um, so yeah, so that's it. So I don't know if, if you guys, if you guys like that, if you like that, I, I, I can do more of these. Um, it's kind of fun to, 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 to glance through stuff like this. I have some more magazines. I have some books, you know, some, some books related to 80s slashers we can do a quick glance through. Um, I know this hasn't been exactly quick. It's been, <laughs> it's been about 40 minutes or so, but, um, 
yeah, so anyway, so that was it. So again, anyone who stuck around to the end, thanks for thanks for watching the entire video, and thanks everyone who has been watching my previous videos. Thanks for subscribing, making comments, giving me the thumbs up, um, all that. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, guys, until uh, until next time. All right, see ya.